If you follow me on Instagram, you will know that I broke a mini plateau lately and have been uploading Moonboard benchmark sands on a daily basis. This is largely thanks to the help of my strong friends. And one of them is Moonboard enthusiast, Fearless Tofu. I had a chance to train with her a few weeks ago. And here's what I learned from her. Yeah, so this is um, surprisingly difficult. So it looks easy, but it's actually difficult. If this is angled better, I'll be able to hold it and then get my foot back on. But Wow, super strong. Okay, what's the key here? So I moved the feet over more to the right. And then I felt a little more stable in the left arm. And then I could make the bigger move from the left. Okay, so we're saying get your left foot like here? Yeah. Oh! Yeah? Does it feel better? It better. I think I can actually finish this thing. Oh, this hole is actually bad. Okay. Come on. Nice. Yeah, come on. Nice! Yes! <laughs> the reason why moving the feet more to the right works is because the target handhold is angled to the left by 45 degrees. When you grip a hold, if you apply force to the opposite direction of where the hold is angled, it will become a lot easier. For example, when you grip a side pull angle to the left, you want to pull to the right. Similarly, for this target handhold, you will want to apply force downward and rightward. The hardest point to hold on to a handhold during a dynamic move is the moment when you first hit the hold. In my original beta, when I hit the handhold, most of my weight is at the center, which means there is only mostly downward force and it's very difficult to hold on to the target hold. However, with Fearless Tofu's beta, when I hit the handhold, my lower body is on the right side. Hence, it creates a downward and rightward force. And that makes holding on to the target hold so much easier. Next, I showed Fearless Tofu a move that I was stuck on. But if you just jump from the mat, you can hold it, right? Yeah, it has to be super precise. Try to hold this move, no feet, and just hang for like three seconds to get that muscle memory there of what it should feel like when you hit it and you have both hands there. Yeah, I mean, this is definitely not a comfortable position. When you catch something like this dynamically, I find that watching videos of myself and other people, when they don't catch it, it's because they're not engaging the scapula, lats, and traps. So they end up looking kind of like this. Mm -hmm. But if everything's engaged and you catch it like this, you should be able to control it. It's a handboarding. <laughs> I think that time looks better than the time before when you tried it. With the engaged scapula tip, I can hold on to the handholds better, but that also means I have to jump further to get into the position. However, I was having trouble generating enough power. I tried to bring my left foot high and jump from my left foot, but it didn't work either. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to do the move during the session with Fearless Tofu. When I worked on it by myself the other day, I realized I could jump with more power with both feet. Even though the body position is less ideal for each individual foot, Jumping with 70% of both feet is still better than jumping with 100% of one foot. With that extra power, I was able to jump to the hold, engage my scapula, and finish the entire route. Depending on the position, there are exceptions where jumping with both feet is not better than jumping with one foot. The main thing is don't forget that you have the option to jump with both feet. 
Thanks for watching. I encourage you to find a moon board to try out the same exact moves. I'm also pretty sure that I will get stuck on other moon board moves along the way, and I'll be reaching out to strong friends for advice so we can all learn from them together. Just in case you don't know yet, Fearless Tofu has a YouTube channel. So be sure to check her channel out here.